How's the boats? Ships are freaking great. The boats, though. I call you the Don't boats. Co- yeah. The boats are bigger, bigger than shit boat. <laughs> what did I call you the other day? <laughs> I forgot you coughed in Jab Sparrow or something. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, welcome to another episode of Comedy Club Confessions. I'm very excited about this one because a uh, very, very funny, talented comedian, actor, uh, Mr. Jonathan Kai is in the building. Bow, 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 bow. What's up, dude? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Uh, dude, uh, how long have you been doing comedy now? I started uh, in uh, t- in 2012. 2012. I was at the Improv, mm-hmm. and um, we, I'd always wanted to do stand up, but there was, um, you know, it takes a long time, obviously, to like get going, and and yeah. I wanted to devote the time that I wanted to, and I had a, a summer off where I couldn't accept another job because I had a contract. And Ian Edwards, shout out to Ian Edwards and Taylor Williamson, who were two buddies of mine. I literally went to the Improv to hang with them and get dinner and watch their sets. And while we were eating, waiting for them to go on, or maybe they just went on, they like talked me into it, and I started doing setup the next day. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, just yeah. like that. I love those guys so much, and they were just like, "Yeah," because Ian was like, "What are you doing with the voices that you do?" And I was like, "Nothing." I mean, you know what he mean. And he was just like, "Man, you should do comedy." So. How did you find that talent? That voices. Um, I would say I used to impersonate my teachers growing up. Like, oh. there's this guy, Mister Shut. I think he's dead, but um, he uh would he was like a, a Harry Potter teacher, like a real Snape attitude, and he when he was sick. I would teach the class as him. We would convince the sub to let me as the do Mr. Shut impression and teach the class. But just like probably. What did he sound like? You know what's crazy is I don't remember. Like, I mean, uh, he had sort of like a, he had a very jowly face. He looked like a he looked like a, a teacher at Hogwarts. I mean, he was very like, sort of like, you know, not like a droopy thing, but he very stern. Very like an Armenian. Like, Armenia, yeah, buddy, buddy. No, he was this guy was this guy was like old school white bread. Oh, okay. Like um like Dead Poet Society. Okay. Yeah. And he um but he was just the strictest dude. And so I probably just made fun of guys I knew growing up. And then when I came out here, you know, I don't know if did you ever audition for sketch shows? No, I never have. Oh, dude, there's always like a a, you know different sketch shows and they were just asking who you could do and i could do voices so i learned impressions for them so i, I remember those auditions basically they go you got two minutes and give me your characters like that in two minutes yeah like that. They, they literally are like give us a preview of what you would do on the show you know so like you would do three impressions three characters or whatever how many you think you could do and um because i think for me maybe i'm wrong i think less people could do impressions so i would always try to do more impressions yeah and um, <clears throat> I auditioned for a bunch of them, and uh, I remember I went in for this um, for this one where uh, they were I, it never even got made, but it was they were like, "Could you do impressions?" And I like I lied. I was like, "Yeah." So I just signed with this manager, and he got me to go in there, and I did like the oldest impressions, like people they would never use on a on a modern show. Yeah, like uh, like uh, Wallace Shawn from The Princess Bride. You know that guy? He's Don't like the know. inconceivable. You know him. Your kids know him. Wait, wait. What does he sound like? He he sounds like this. You know, he plays the T Rex from Toy Story. Oh you know, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of guy, yeah. Right? Oh shit, yeah. So and I could do him. I could do like Brad Garrett, and I could do um uh Tim Gunn. You know from Project Runway. Like make it work. Yeah. But they were like, <laughs> and they liked that. But they were like, yo, who could you do that's like on TV today? Yeah. Even though Tim Gunn was on TV. But it's like I had all these like old, like I called them Branson, Missouri impressions. Yeah. Like they probably would be good for like, you know. But then I was like, oh, I lied. And I'm like, oh, I could do all these modern ones. They're like, great. And usually, so when you have a callback for this type of stuff, they give you time, right? Like even for two brokers and stuff like that. It's like a, it was like a three month audition process, right? So I thought like, oh, I'd have time to go learn them. They literally were like, my manager called on Friday after I'd done it. They're like, they love you. The, the producer's callback is Monday morning. Oh, wow. And so I went to this place called Rocket Video. It's not there anymore. And I bought a copy of Fred Claus where Vin, with Vince Vaughn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I watched it. And, like I must have like worn out that DVD. That's my favorite person impersonation when you do Vince Vaughn. I, uh, well, I I watched the scene at the beginning, Baby Boy, where he's like talking <laughs> to a little girl and he's like trying to tell her about why he's reborn, <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> So I did that. I was like, because I did, A, I didn't want my manager to drop me. Yeah. Because I was just like, I just lied. And I did Nicolas Cage and I did um, Barack Obama. Yeah. And so, but like, I was freaking out because I was pretty young and yeah. I didn't want the manager to be like, 
you would lie, you know, even though I did lie, because I thought, oh, don't worry, I'll have more time to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I came back on Monday, and they loved the Vince Vaughn. They were like, you're probably not going to play Obama. You know? uh, you're probably not yeah, going to play probably. Obama. I mean, it was back then, so I might have been able to play him. And um, and then, uh, but I didn't wind up getting it, but I got very, very, very far. And so I guess from that moment on, he, in his mind, I never lied, because he didn't know I lied. Yeah. yeah. So then he started submitting me for like every sketch show. Oh, wow. And that was insane because they were like, oh, who can you do impressions of? So then if somebody, so my buddies and I would just be like, if we heard somebody like Ryan Reynolds or Seth Rogen or James Gano, whoever I was doing, I was like, I think I could learn that guy. And then he would submit me for this stuff. And then I would go in an audition. So take me around the process. I, cause I, I'm not really good with voices. How do you train your mouth or how does it is there like a gift or what is it? I, I don't know it's to definitely be a gift you, it's you're, you're talented as hell dude. i mean oh thank you but I, I don't know like to be honest with you because there's ones that i cannot do people always ask if i do women and it's like my voice is in a, the like satan's basement like it would be so hard i could yeah. probably do b arthur like this is my impression of b arthur what's up i was on golden girls like that's it you know <laughs> so it's like but but it, it it's a tonal thing and it's like music right you have yeah. to i think when i hear a lot of singers that are really good at impressions or vice versa you yeah. know like jamie fox who you know i love so much like it's like that guy can do both it's like being able to hit those things because it's all what you sound like because me i have weird um my eustachian tubes are screwed up in my head so uh -huh. what i'll like do an impression and i think i nailed it oh i used to do nathan lane um you know the cool shit and um i didn't sound like him and i thought for sure i did like and then somebody like taped me one time and i was like damn i do not sound like nathan <laughs> lane but i was like i would have i would have died on that hill yeah. i was like fuck you i definitely sound like nathan but that's the thing because in my head it sounds weird so i have to learn it and then almost do it on stage like a lot of times now I've done this maybe I don't know if I've done it with you but if we're on the same show but I'll just be like give me in a voice and let's see if I can do it yeah. and then I'll just try it and to see what my reaction would be and if the audience their reaction helps me figure it out ah uh, okay but you don't you don't just practice you always practice these uh, voices on stage only or no you man you practice it all the time especially oh, okay. when you had to so I booked a sketch show with Jamie Foxx like yeah, he yeah. did a new sketch show that was on Fox and um I was the was it the guy. Jamie Foxx project. No, it was um. Was the one Afion was on too? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I know Vinny did that too. Vincent O'Shaughnessy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Um, that. he uh, I think was he had an episode with us. I don't remember. I don't. I remember. I went. I went with him. That's why I went. It was him. It was Jimmy Fox. It was Kane from Men's Society. He was in the room, and uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Afion. Yeah. Oh, so wow. it was like the four of us, like the main company. It was like. It was amazing people. It was um, Robin Thede. Do you know her? She yeah, does, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's awesome. And then Afian and then Brisha Webb is amazing. Yeah. And me. So if there was a white guy, I had to do it. Yeah. So I learned a lot of impressions that I didn't do because they would write these amazing sketches, just like it in Living Color, just like SNL, right? Yeah. If Jim didn't, Carrie didn't do the impression. They're like, well, you're the white guy, so do the impression. Yeah. So which was awesome. So that really um, was like a fight or flight mentality. And that was really fun to be in that environment where you're like, oh shit, I need to learn this or I'm yeah. gonna, cause they're so talented. The rest yeah. of the people, obviously, you know them, your audience knows them too, I'm yeah. sure. But it's like, I couldn't be the guy who was like, oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know? So then you did, so, so you started with sketches and voices. And yeah. then I, when I really, first time I met you was, uh, I think Vinny introduced me to you, said, hey, this guy is a uh, funny, does voices. You want, Dude, I met Vinny. Up, right? I met Vinny because we tried to do a sketch show back in the day with Damon Jr. Yeah, yeah. And it was um, it was amazing. When I first moved out here, I was like 23 years old. Yeah, yeah. We got introduced through mutual friends, and I met him when I was like a kid. Was this the frat? The frat? Or was it another one? I don't know what it yeah. was because I never saw it. I never got the footage. <laughs> we weren't fed very well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was kind of a waste of my time. No, no. It was awesome because I love Vinny, and we obviously – St are still friends, yeah, still friends today yeah, yeah. and it was like i remember but we did this really this um the only sketch that i remember is when um he was uh he was a guy because the housing was so expensive that he took this girl on this date and he drove around and then finally she's like where's your apartment like we've been dating a long time i don't even remember who this girl is sorry but she was like it just bugs me that i like i want to be with you but we don't know where, i never know where you live and he goes i told you i took you to my place you're here and she goes he looks out the window she's like oh shit is this your mansion he goes no i live in my car <laughs> And then um, she's like, well, that's not so bad. He goes, it, it is when you have roommates. And you realize that I'm sleeping in the back the whole time. And I'm his roommate. That's hilarious. It was such a I, funny sketch. I think I've seen that. That's a, yeah. So we did that. We did a basketball sketch. I mean, it was awesome. And everybody was super cool. And But yeah, 
that's how I that's how I met uh, Vinny and, and we got started. That's great, man. And how did you get the two broke girls? What, was that another different uh, sketch audition? No, no, no. I mean, I, I only did this sketch. That was like a side thing. I was doing like pilots and stuff and I was doing commercials and everything. But like the the room of I think of, of people who do sketch. I mean, even though in L.A. is an amazing, you know, obviously you have Second City, the Groundlings, uh, you know, that IOS, everything Upper Citizens Brigade out here. You know what? What they ask for is a lot of times you do they want you to do characters but like they still need people to do impressions right yeah. think about anybody who was on snl and you're like yeah but that guy or girl like they still did impressions so you would audition with like the same people all the time for these sketch shows yeah. so that was only like one circuit that i did but i was paying my bills as an actor so two broke girls just like came up when i was auditioning for this other show and they're like we're doing this new show from the creator of sex in the city and I was just like, that show is amazing. Obviously, one of the only shows to start on cable and then, sorry, to start on cable and they get sold into syndication. Yeah. So, th- I mean, like, that is so impressive. Like, yeah. that's unbelievable, unprecedented, right? So, I was a big fan of his. And um, the coolest thing was, he was, um, they were like, you're, ne- you're probably not going to book this part. It's a 50 year old Russian guy, but it stars Kat Dennings. She had just been cast and i was just like damn i mean she's amazing I, and um so i went in there and i met whitney cummings yeah. who was a creator with michael patrick king yeah and um it just i kept getting called back and it was it was crazy because they wanted a guy everybody else i was auditioning john lovett's auditioned for the part of oleg no way so everybody was in their 50s and 60s and i was like the one guy i think it was like 30 or 31 years old or something so how did you find that that voice did they say that did they say like they just said he's russian and I didn't want to sound like I I, I grew up in in Chicago uh, with uh, a lot of Russians, uh, and so there's a, like a lot of my friends' parents. They're like this, you know, heavy smoker, yeah, like stuff. Talk like this one. Yes, but this is not good for TV because you can't talk, you can't talk fast. It's easier and crisper to hit a punchline with a higher note. Yeah. So I talk like this because it's easier to talk. You can hear him harder, and it doesn't sound like me. So uh, that's how I learned it because wow. they, they would like they would give you like you know I get speeches and stuff and to do them the first it's very hard to do yeah, this and like bl- bl- run bl- together yeah yeah and yeah. for TV because you know I know Russians who are like you're not really doing the V like yeah but you have to do it for TV, TV because it has to be close enough to authentic but also you have to deliver the jokes it's got to be funny it's got to be and it's got to be something that people want to hear because like you're essentially for television you're inviting people in. To you know your house every yeah. week. You sound way more likable just with the higher. Yeah, pitch. the higher. Yeah, my normal voice is not likable. Is what Jack Junior is trying to say, <laughs> and uh, that's coming really through loud no, and clear. It's, it, no, but it's true. You you think about that. I think about that stuff. You know, and I and I think of like people that I really it, that I admire who do that. You know, there's there's a lot of I think th- I like to think thought that goes into it and and making it accessible but also different and also i like playing characters yeah so to to do that and sort of have this thing about it's, yeah. it's like a it's a funnier take thing me back it. to the audition what was the what was the audition what did it say yo the audition was crazy because it was only like a few lines i'm telling you like three lines yeah that's what I'm from, probably like three lines when i tell you like Russian three lines old fat guy to accent. nail they were just like hey barbie like that's all it was and then there was another one that where he was like i did it but it was so short that like if you had sneezed you would have missed it but they still i always think the best writing and the best producers and the best casting personally they don't need 15 pages they don't that's just me right when you when i get a script because i've gone on for a lot of pilots this season yeah you do when you when you get the script and it's only like one scene like five lines you're like these people know like they can look at you immediately and go yes or no and that michael is a he is a master at listening to you for like one second he's like no it's not gonna work thank you or like you're great because we would have table reads all the time where people would would be guest starring on the show they would get fired after the table read no way dude i'm talking about people with one line like taxi like no it's not gonna work like (laughs) this dude he is uh, he is so so anyway so the audition was i went in there and i wore what i wear on the show because i was like i'm never gonna book this part i had really short hair probably the length of your hair but it was pushed forward you know no beard no mustache i'm like the same weight i'm like 31 years old i'm like what's up guys and uh, i go in there and i wear a hairnet and i take a um a sleeveless white shirt and i stain mustard on it and I went to Goodwill 
and I got these weird clubbing pants that were brown and black tiger stripes. <laughs> and I hemmed them up, and they had like sad faded glitter on the thigh, like real Euro oh trash. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And I wore high s- white sweat socks and these brown leather flip flops from Gap. Shout out Gap. And um, <laughs> and I would come in there, and he was like bull. Like they were so nice to me, and um and um you know the craziest thing was like uh I went down the line. And I, Whitney was there. And the truth was, like, I love Whitney and she's the best. And I loved her from the roast and stuff. But the yeah. truth was, like, they didn't, like, I was not what they were looking for, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I went down the line and I um, sort of, uh, would, like, said hi to certain people. And at the end, I got to Whitney and I was just like, it's so nice to meet you. Like, I love you on the road. Just genuine, by the yeah. way. It's a producer's meeting. I'm not going to, like, I got three lines I'm going to say. I'll get out of your way so you can cast this thing. I had a great time. I love you. Keep killing it, whatever. And then I um, I pulled back, and right before the audition, I go, some of you might have re- noticed that I went down the line and said hi to some of you, but not all of you. That's because I haven't heard of the rest of you. I go, I'm Jonathan Kite. Let's start this audition. Uh, and Michael said in that moment, he was like, that's the guy. Really? Before I even talked. He goes, if you can do the accent, he's good. And then when I went back, and they were... So, because that process, by the way, when I auditioned for the Jamie show, which I'll tell you about in a second, yeah, these the pressure is it's like people get like when you're older, like in your 40s and 50s, you like get it, like, all right, you just done it a million times. But if you haven't been to like March Madness, the big dance, that you you don't realize how much they're like looking at everything you're doing in that room. Yeah. And so the next time I went back to Warner Brothers, Whitney pulled me aside and she's like, hey, we changed some of the script. We want to hear if it works on you. And I did uh, and I did the script and I did it whatever. It was cool. It was fun. She goes, don't go in there speaking English. When they ask you, Peter Roth, I love Peter Roth so much. He was the old uh, uh, president of Warner Brothers Television. He was the uh, one of my favorite people I ever met. When I met him, he thought I was Russian. Really? And so it wasn't until after, because she goes, when they talk to you, just speak in the accent. That's so, it. And then we did it, and then I got to test for CBS, and it was amazing. Like, it was so cool. And then, But you just kept going back, and you're like, I'm never going to get this. I'm never going to get this. Yeah. And then the two guys that I tested against, they're both very, very successful. One guy's a British guy and is like 55 or 60 now, and the other guy's a Russian guy who's 55 and 60 as well. How was that being in the room with both of those guys that you were uh... – um, like the guys that were like right there with you, they weren't. We we said that we had the easiest job because we were not in competition with one another. Oh, okay. Because they were like, they're not gonna. It's not between like it, like you and I go out for this. Maybe something similar. We're like yeah. kind of similar in age. Maybe the mustache thing. But it's like those guys. We didn't look anything alike. Oh, okay. So it was what it was. It was like it the, was like what do they want? Everybody else. It yeah. looked like Noah's Ark, like two. Yeah. It was like two older black guys. <laughs> you know, two Asian guys. I mean, they looked very similar. Who else did you see in the casting room for the other parts? There was anyone, anyone big? Um, so I, I don't know his name, and I think he just passed away. But there was a, oh. a black gentleman who was on a uh, Night Court. Night Court, who was very famous. He auditioned against Garrett Morris, who Garrett Morris got the show. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know him from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, 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 yeah. For original cast, he had amazing. A club in downtown for a amazing, bit. Yeah. but he's been on everything. He was, he was on Jamie Foxx show, show. Martin. Yep. The guy's a legend. Legend. One of the coolest dudes I ever met, and um. And and it, so the two of them, so two legends, yeah. were going out against each other. Now, obviously, they're not the same type because the one guy from Night Court's a much bigger guy, yeah. and Garrett is is a little shorter. But um, they were the same age. We weren't even my guys weren't even the same age. Yeah. And one of the guys was like a, a stocky kind of like bulldog, uh, and he was from London. Yeah. And the other guy was a big guy, um, and he was from Russia. So now, when you're doing all these shows, and uh, you're, you're you're basically you're still are you still auditioning or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still auditioning. You have the show. Were you doing stand-up still, or were you just doing spots? Uh, you talking about right now? No, no, I'm talking about then. Oh, then I, I, I. So the first year after Two Broke Girls got picked up for another season, I couldn't accept the job, so I started stand-up that summer got in it. between seasons one and two, and I would tour as much as I possibly could. Yeah, I remember because you always you you always get up there and uh, you work out your voice and everything. Yeah, That's because great. I didn't want you know what because I wanted the respect. I didn't want to be some asshole from TV who was like coming to take people's spot, which I know happens a lot, you know. Yeah, it does. and I wanted to earn. 
people's respect, but by respecting the craft. I wasn't like looking for people's approval, yeah. but I wanted to show that if I was going to compete for spots, that I could be competitive and not just my resume. But that's great because you didn't really have to do that shit. I mean, honestly, when you're in a hit show, you just yeah. But it's like, but you know hey, what? Hey, excuse me. <laughs> and maybe people will tell me otherwise, but now I think like, like comics, like I'm friends with comics now. Because they were like, oh, yeah, this guy wasn't some asshole who was just coming in being like, hey, guy, can you get out of here? TV show buddies here. Was there anyone that was kind of rude to you when you first started? I mean, I don't want to say names, but like there were definitely people that were like, oh, fuck, Mr. You know, Mr. TV over here. Like I could like I felt it in the room and I could tell like whenever I would try open mics, you know, was, was, was anyone like important or was it just some freaking random person? Uh, No, nobody important. Yeah, like, that's, all uh, the, that's always the ones that I always try to. It was Will shit. Smith. <laughs> and um no but you know and i would do the open mics you know what ha ha i yeah. did a lot of open mics at ha ha and i did a lot of ones at improv and i'll never re- forget I, did, I used to do a rush limbaugh impression and i remember there was like one dude who i see around and i can't remember his name and i'm so i won't call him out or anything but he like he didn't he would never laugh but when i did that one he was he would he did like two claps to be like okay that's good at least yeah. but like it was really hard for me and i wasn't even again i'm not even looking for their laughter i was going on the road i just had to practice getting it up yeah. and not in my car or in my or, you know yeah. walking around my apartment and so, but I do think that people sort of warm to me and I wasn't using the, I wasn't like, what's up with two broke girls? Am I right guys? Is yeah. that crazy? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to do actual bits, mm-hmm. real material. And bro, I, I ate a dick. Like I bombed a lot mm-hmm. and, but I was just like, okay, that's part of it. It's part of it. You gotta, when, yeah. once you start, you gotta, you gotta bomb. I mean, I'm I, still bombing. I'm bom- <laughs> I bombed for, uh, I bombed my first entire year, bro. Like crazy. I, I couldn't even perform in front of my parents because all you talk about was a new comic is sex, drugs, yeah. and what you're doing. And that's all I would talk about. So I never really performed in front of my parents till like two years in. Wow. And she would tell comics, please don't put my son. Tell him, talk to him. He's so dirty. <laughs> Their mom. That He's is so a, dirty. My mom got to see me do it. And by that time, I was already rolling. And I was saying filthy ass shit, you know? Yeah. So then it didn't. They were just like, oh, God, I guess this is his life now. But, you know, I was never trying to be blue or dirty or whatever. And I was doing the impressions because I thought, what could I do I could talk about Hollywood because, like, you know, this was really before, like, social was any – it was big, you know? So I would go out and then I would, like – people would ask me on the road, like, have you ever met any of the celebrities that you did impressions of? And I would tell the stories and try to make them funny and beef them up a little bit and give my – you know, sort of like that – my take. Like, probably the way that, like, Jay Farrow does it or Frank Caliendo or Jim Carrey, like, when they were doing that type of thing. And so, you know, it was Who's your favorite person to impersonate? Probably – I mean, I really like doing Trump, but – I did him a long time ago before he was president. Oh, really? So I had been doing him as like a... Just because you try to think of people that everybody knows. And he was somebody because he had been famous for so long. Yeah. But 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 he wasn't but he was not like a star. So like he wasn't Pacino or De Niro or Denzel or whatever. But if you did Donald Trump, he was almost before he was president, almost as famous as the president. Yeah. So like when you could get into a room and people didn't hate him like they do today. So I liked getting up there and just doing Trump. And I, I've been doing him for a while. Can you do Trump as not as a president? Because everyone does the whole China and all that. Do something else. I would say, let me say this, Jack. You're so great. Okay. Believe me. Okay. Let me just say this. When you come down to Mar-a-Lago and it's so beautiful down there. Okay. Believe me. Okay. <laughs> believe me. It's so beautiful. You know, not Disney, not Disney. Okay. That's where the, the crocodile, it ain't the baby. It ain't the baby. It said yum, yum, baby. Okay. We don't do that at Mar-a-Lago. We feed them in the cages, babies. They don't like to come out. That's something that Sleepy Joe does. Okay. I wouldn't allow that. Not on my, not on my watch. It wouldn't happen. You know, I'm down there. Very good. And it's great. It's fantastic. And I'm fantastic. And you're fantastic. <laughs> Um, oh, it's great, dude. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. But I like doing Tom Hanks. That's my favorite impression. Tom Hanks in Toy Story? Or Tom Hanks? I mean, you can do him. Here's the other thing. You have to understand how people know them. So people do Denzel from Training Day. They always we, do. They, they, oh, because that's what we love. I can do Denzel from Training yeah, Day. Yeah, all right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. You, yeah, okay. but when you hear a guy do So I would do Tom Hanks probably as Woody from Toy Story because yeah. it was a generational yeah, thing yeah. of him. And um, and so, and Tom Hanks was one of my heroes growing up. So like I really, and I like to do people that I'm, I haven't heard people do personally because then you offer something new in, instead of doing like, you know, whoever for like the 50th, you know, millionth time or whatever. I actually just saw Forrest Gump. Can you do Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump? 
I mean, I think that's what the timing said people did where he was like, Jen, I, I mean, it's sort of like I do. Um, Hi. <laughs> well, we're on here. We're having a great time. <laughs> Ruff of Melrose. Come on, guys. Come on down. <laughs> <Whoa -ho! laughs> yeah. I like I like that because the Burbs is like my favorite Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, yeah. At the end, when he's like, "Take me to the hospital," <laughs> and so like I like that. I mean, you could, but I feel like that's the thing. You got to do it enough that the person is well known enough, but not the thing. And when Forrest Gump came out, I feel like everybody was doing like life is yeah, like yeah. a box of chocolate. Jenna, 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 yeah, Bubba Gump, everything like that, Bubba Gump. Hey Sorry. guys, real quick, uh, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Comedy Showcase app. Make sure to download it. Comics upload your videos, send your clips. These guys are great. They're doing a lot of big things. They're looking out for comedians and they're putting money in your pocket. So I don't know if you've heard of it, Comedy Showcase app. No. You put your video on on their app, yeah. and for the views, they will send you money. Oh shit! It's like it's dope. It's great. That's really good. Check it out. And that's our sponsor for the thing. Oh, that's um, awesome. One more question before we get out of here. Um. What is your favorite thing about comedy right now? My favorite thing about comedy... Because you're touring right now, right? Yeah, I am touring. And I think that... Um, that I, th I think my favorite thing is still going for it. Like, still going for something that may not be popular. Because what's popular is not always right. Mm -hmm. And what is loud may seem popular, mm -hmm. but it's it may not be the way people are thinking. You know, like I, I always think, we, you know, when I do something kind of crazy, you know, when people like look around the room to make sure that the people that I'm talking about are laughing, would you know, whether it's, you know, any sort of different ethnicity than me or gender than me or whatever. But it's like you don't I, don't, I think that if you still go for it and you're coming from a place of just pointing something out, that's a real like this could fucking blow up in my face like big time, even now more than ever. Yeah. Like we are walking through minefields. And I think that there's something exciting about that, considering that we it feels like so much of today is predictable, you know, like with with all the not not necessarily censorship, but that is included or like, you know what you're going to get from certain things that with stand up. You still don't know what you're going to get. It's like, you know, it's like a box of chocolate. <laughs> that is true, though. Yeah, dude. When you go up there, bro, I'll tell you, I did the lab, the improv like a month or so ago when I tell you. I bombed so hard, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And the thing was, the truth was, the audience was right. Now, I always, I, I'm not that comic who's like, the audience is always right. I don't think that. That's not, uh -huh. you paid to hear what I think is funny, not yeah. the other way around. This yeah. is not like a living Yelp review. Yeah. yeah. Where, or you could uh, dislike a YouTube video. Some people find me funny, some people don't. Obviously, when you're on a showcase, you're going to like the varied, you know what I mean? Like maybe you'll like you, maybe you won't like me, whatever. But when you come to see me, you know, I want to make sure that the, uh, most of the time the audience understands that I'm there to tell jokes. But I was telling this new joke and I just was like, fuck it, I'm not even going to work it out. I'm just going to talk about it. Bro. I mean, nothing, dude, when I tell you people were like, they were almost like, no, <laughs> like, like, uh, uh, and I, it was, it, and, but the truth was, it wasn't that the joke wasn't working. It's that the order that I did it in, cause I figured out the joke like two weeks later yeah. and I was like, damn, I got to start with this. Cause if you go right to dolphin rape, people are like, what did he just say? Like, it's so yeah, jarring yeah, yeah. that it, and it didn't give that it w was without context. Yeah. Because I was just going over articles, you know, the comics who were just yeah. reading shit. Like, what could we talk about? What, and then that dolphin rape came up. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, let me let me just talk about that. Not in like a unsympathetic way or not like making light of I've dolphin heard this rape. Bit. It's good. Oh, thanks. But uh, I understand what you're saying. That's what my favorite part of comedy is right now. What you just said. When you figure it out. Yeah. When oh, you yeah. when you put the pieces, like you just you say a joke this week and it goes, eh. Then you say it next week, eh. But then once you finally get goes, the the setup punch, boom, that's my favorite part yeah. of comedy. And I, I, I'm honestly, I, I've been very, uh, what is it? What's the word? I've been very like, I've been lazy a little bit. I haven't been writing new shit because mm. I've been on the, on the road and I'm so used to just doing. You've just, been on the sea. On the sea and the road. <laughs> but it's just, I, 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 I want a bomb. Can I, can I give you something? Yeah. I want you to do a tour okay. that you film and you do, uh, Two shows you splice together. Remember, kill the messenger when Chris Rock cut together yeah, yeah, yeah. London and J Johannesburg and uh, New York. You do three locations. You do um, maybe one in America and maybe one. Uh, you're Armenian. Armenian. Yeah. yeah, one in Armenia and then one on the boat in between. So it's called two if by land, one if by sea. 
Because you're a cruise ship comic, bro. That's so two on the <laughs> land, one on the sea, bro. That's you, dog. No. I'm always coming up with terrible tour ideas. I wanted to do one where I go to hostels across the world. You know where they're little hostels? Yeah. So sometimes it's in a laundromat. And then call it Jonathan Kite's Hostel Takeover. <laughs> You're terrible. always, but that's a comedian, comedian mind in you, bro. You're always working. You got to think of something, man. Make that's, it interesting. What's the next step? Um, so right now I'm going on the road. Really, really excited. Um, doing like Moon Tower in uh, in Austin in uh, in two weeks, that's and then I do. Yo, it's gonna be so fun. I, I just, I love. I I had a great experience. I went to Austin a lot during the pandemic when we were closed here, you know. Yeah. And I've been already this time. I went like a couple weeks ago. I really like to try stuff out there because it really is middle of the country mm-hmm. and um, I enjoy. So anyway, shout out. But um, I'm going to be just going on tour, man, and really just working out this new shit. And I really hope to tape a special. I was supposed to tape a special in 2020. I had the room, everything figured out. The everything. jokes all figured out. Everything. And then Cold someone room. fucked a bat. And it was like, someone <laughs> dude, and it wasn't Catwoman. And it was like, and the, and the shittiest thing was, now that shit doesn't work. Because it doesn't, like, your, the perspective, and that's the other thing about timing is, you know what I like? It, I equate it to surfing. Like, I, I just got back from, from a, a, a um, I went to the the beach with some friends, and I was, like, admiring the surfers and being like, they have to catch that wave at the right time. Yeah. That's what comedy is. Like, I've thought of jokes 20 years ago that, that me and my buddies are just bullshitting yeah. and then you catch that right wave and I love that. Yeah. That is also one of my favorite parts of comedy because you go, oh shit, this is the wave. Yeah. Get on it. And so, and now I realize that all that, a lot of the shit that I had from two years ago, it's dead in the water. And I just don't like to see that in myself and other comedians where you're like, you know, you're like, what's up with, what's up with, uh, you know, Bill Clinton? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, there's an old, there's an old, old God. references. Oh my god, I hate when comments do that, man. Can you believe Calvin do you guys Coolidge? Remember the, do you remember Training Day? Oh, remember like they comics are still doing those those imp- Dude, impersonations. I, so I will do them. Can I tell you? And this is not to make fun of those comics, but it's the idea I will do old ass references as, as like a joke. A, as a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be, but it's just. You, I mean, it's. Not, the thing is, timing obviously is everything. So, for it's an impressionist, the the timing has to really be everything, yeah. you know. And so, I'm exciting. So, I'm trying to figure out um, what the special is going to look like, and we I have some locations that we've been scouting and stuff. It's fun. I just I like to be in the process and in the hunt of it, mm-hmm. and um, I can't wait to get on back on the road. I've got tons of dates coming up. Well, dude, thank you for being on the podcast, dude. Thank you so much for having. This me. This was amazing. Uh, there's a lot of information you guys are going to hear about. The, the, just becoming an actor and you you're you're a perfect example ben put in the work you took comedy classes now you're doing comedy now he's on tour i never took comedy classes i'll say that you never took comedy classes never acting classes i i went to school i was a theater major yeah theater major didn't go to school what's up what's up and we're in the same room <laughs> how the fuck did i fuck up this is goddamn terrible comedy club confessions guys thank you so much jonathan kite appreciate Thanks for you having me, bro love you thanks man love you bro